Mr. Overlander, your table is ready. Well, hello again, everyone. As always, I hope you're all doing well. As you probably guessed from the intro, we will be installing a table. Uh, to be more specific, this is the Bison Gear table, and it's an aluminum folding one that you mount to the rear door. So a standard table like this one that I have some tools on right now is really boring, but as soon as you mount a table on your door, everybody goes crazy, and you get a lot of overlander points. Uh, there are a couple things about the table that are not the best we will go through those but overall this is actually one of the most useful items for camping and off-roading uh, that i've found on my white fj just uh, i tend to go out when i'm off-roading for like one day and i bring lunch along and it's just great you can put your stove here uh, if you're not even if you're not cooking you can just put whatever food you have and lay it out especially if you've got other people that you brought food for you've got lots of room on the rear table now what i'm going to do is just unpack this uh, i'm going to be learning a little bit as well because my table was a prototype this one should be easier to install than mine was and i'll be curious to see if they've changed anything um, from when i put mine on a few years ago so i will just unpack this now and uh, the other thing I will say is I'm just going to install it from memory. I'm pretty sure I remember it's quite easy. Um, we're going to pull off the rear door skin. We're not going to try to mount it while it's on the door. I heard of one person doing that. And to me, that just does not seem like a very good idea. Um, and then for tools, I kind of remember what I need, but we might have to add more to the list. I'll just quickly show you. I have a drill because, of course, you're going to have to drill through the plastic. So I've got some drill bits. Uh, I'll see what the hardware that comes with it's like. And then I have a screwdriver here and some plastic pry tools. Now, if you don't have plastic pry tools for getting off the inner door skin, you can take a screwdriver like this and just wrap it with a bit of tape, electrical tape, painter's tape, scotch tape, basically anything just to make these edges dull so that when you dig against uh, the plastic and metal back here, you won't scrape the paint off your door. So I brought this out just to show for that, but I also might need it for the hardware when we're putting it together. Um, but if you have the chance to get some plastic pry tools, uh, I'll be trying them today. When I pulled my door skin off, I actually used that screwdriver method, but today I'm being all fancy and we'll see how these work. So I'm just gonna get this uh, box cut open and uh, we'll take a look at what's inside. So for those of you who don't know, Bison Gear is actually located in Poland. So this box has had quite a ways to come. Now the nice thing is you can see on the edges that they've put these hard cardboard parts just to protect everything. And then now as we open it up, it's all bubble wrapped. So some companies I know skimp every now and then on their packing materials, but Bison Gear is not one of them. Uh, I'm not, oh, so. I will actually probably install this in a later video, but this is uh, on the dash of the FJ in front of the passenger side. I believe that's where this goes. This just mounts up and then you have storage bags for anything your passenger wants to put in front of them. On my FJ, I have a mount there with a molly panel, which I don't think I've shown in a video yet. So I will install this on this FJ and just you'll get to see what that looks like in a future video. But this is also from Bison Gear. The other thing I'll say, is I do have a discount code for Bison Gear, uh, but it seems to be slightly out of date. So before this video gets posted, I will get a new one and that will be in the description down below. Um, so right now I can't tell you what that discount code will be, but it should be for 10% off, uh, but I will confirm all of that. And once again, check the description and that will all be down there. Now we'll see, it's possible they might have sent stuff for my white FJ as well. I believe this is a dash mount um, for just above the radio. I believe that's what this is. I will confirm that if something's missing from the table, then that's not what this is, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So they just shipped everything together, which makes complete sense. So I will just pull the table out here. Oh, it looks like they've added something nice that mine doesn't have for sure which is this nice uh, bison logo on here. I don't know if you can see it through the plastic. So here, I might just tear it off so that you can see. So right there, you can see 
that's their logo, and then it says Bison Gear, so that's pretty cool. So, as I said, I'm gonna do the table install from memory, so it might not be the absolute perfect install, but I'm pretty sure I remember everything. So, the first thing is you have to pop the back window, which, um, it's amazing how many FJ owners don't actually know that with the key, you can just pop open that back window. And the reason you do that is there are two trim pieces around the struts and you have to pull those off. Um, and you can only do that when the door is open. So I'm using this handy dandy plastic trim tool. I'm actually using the wrong side of it, <laughs> but they just pop off really easily like that. Then I know for a fact you have to get in here and pop both of these two round caps off. And you saw I caught that. I'm Spider-Man. Um, that one I did not catch. But there will be a bolt inside each of those spots. Uh, it's, I think it's a 10 mil, but it's also a Phillips. And since I have a Phillips out, that might be what I use instead of gonna go, going to go find a 10 mil. Um, so I think first... Yeah, I don't think you need to pull off that one from what I remember. So first you need to pull out both of those bolts and that is extremely tight. I might, I will be right back. I think I'm actually gonna go grab, I think that's a 10 mil, but I will be able to confirm that now. So it is indeed a 10 mil and this one is very, very stiff. I remember undoing mine with a screwdriver. So I don't know, whoever, was working in the factory in Japan that day, had muscles. But uh, yeah, basically you just wanna pull out the two bolts and I think that's it for things you need to properly pull out. Okay, there we go. Both 10 mils are out. Now, from what I remember, I think it's this bottom corner is one of the easier ones to get well, maybe we'll start towards the top. Basically what you have to do is, there's a whole bunch of plastic clips in here. I, I remember people saying the bottom is the easiest place to get the clips to start undoing. So you'll put your screwdriver or pry tool in here and you're just gonna have to pull. And we're waiting for that horrendous cracking sound of clips coming undone, which I don't know if this pry tool is just not strong enough, but it doesn't wanna seem to pop. Maybe I will grab the second one. Maybe the screwdriver is better because it's stronger, but let's see if I can get these to start. Um, I don't know why that won't pop. Maybe we'll try along the bottom. Somewhere along here will be some clips. Okay, well, I don't remember mine being this hard. There we go. Okay, there's the first clip. Once you get the first one, I'm just gonna use my fingers because it's easier. Then they start popping easily. So maybe using a screwdriver with tape on it is actually easier. But the... Sorry about all the noises. But yeah, there's a lot of clips. So you have to work your way the whole way along the edge. And then there will be some clips in the middle. And then there's some also along the top. So I'm just trying to remember where exactly you pull. But you got to get the ones along the top edge too. So there are those ones. Let's see. This side isn't fully unclipped. And it might feel scary, but there's actually quite a bit of flex to this plastic. I know it can crack, but if you see this, like this edge moves quite a bit. So you don't have to be worried about it being super brittle. The one thing I would advise is if it's cold where you're doing it, plastic, plastic is always more brittle when it's cold. So right now I'm in a nice warm garage, so I'm not too worried about the plastic having issues with me just reefing on it. But if you're in a cold garage or something, maybe be a little more careful. Okay, 
that's all the clips. So there's ones in the middle here as well, and that's what I was trying to undo. Now the door skin will just be hanging. What you want to do is just lift it up and off and over that rear window uh, latch. That's partially also why you need that window open, just so you can get this off here. So now that we have the door skin off, what I'm going to personally do is pull all of the clips out because I want to be able to lay the door skin flat on the ground. If you don't pull the clips out, you'll crush them, um, which I might have done the first time I put my door skin down. So don't do what I did then. Not all of them got crushed, but I remember a couple of them did, so I replaced them. But yes, just pull these clips out. And I will be back in just a minute after I get all of them out, because yeah, basically every single white clip here just needs to come out. The biggest difference I've seen with the table compared to mine, and I believe I mentioned it a little bit earlier, is a guide hole. And what the guide hole is, is this small hole you see on the front here. And if you look, it lines up perfectly with that top uh, mounting hole on the leg of the table. So what you'll do is you'll drill a hole through there and it'll show you where you should bolt it to. Once you've bolted that, you can fold the table down and drill the rest of the holes and that top bolt will be holding it. So when I did it, it didn't have that and I just had to measure and figure out where that would be. So that makes the install of this much easier, a lot less guesswork because you can just lay it down on the door skin drill that hole and you know exactly where it will line up. Now, uh, I will tell you one funny story about when I mounted mine and hopefully this will keep you from making the same mistake. Um, when I did mine, you can see the door skin here. Uh, these are those bolt holes where you pulled those 10 mil bolts out with the cap. When I mounted mine up, I had these sticking up right in front. And so I bolted everything down. I was super happy. I lifted it up. I mounted it on the back with the clips. And then I went to go put in that bolt and I went, oh no. So what I had to do is I had to pull the whole thing off the back door of the FJ. I had to pull the table off and I had to drill all the holes about this much lower. Uh, luckily the feet hid those extra holes, uh, but my door skin does have a couple extra ones because then I had to push it down and just mount it somewhere around here. Now, the nice thing with this table and having those bolt holes is you can kind of just line these up with the bottom of them. So you don't even need to measure anything. You can just kind of eyeball where it should go um, and so it should be quite easy to do that. That's what I'm just going to do. If you want to be an absolute perfectionist and make sure it lines up perfectly, you can, but you're going to get it very, very close. Uh, just looking at it visually. Uh, so now probably what I'll do is I'll go get a drill bit. I'll set this in place where I want it. And then we'll drill those first guide holes and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. Now for the exciting part, I've lined it up to where it looks good. So once again, it's even with the door skin, but once you put it back on the door, it will be tilted. But I'm just gonna take the drill bit, put it through that guide hole, and there. As you see, that went through the, through the plastic. And then I'm gonna come over to the other side and do the exact same thing, because then we'll be pulling the table off. There we go right through the plastic. So now when I pull off the table, there's a small hole here, small hole there. And then we're just gonna make those holes bigger so that we can fit the first bolts through for this. So I right now loosely have those top two mounts done up. I would like to get them tighter before I do anything else. So what I'm going to try to do is, I believe that's a 10 mil. So I'm just gonna go grab the 10 mil uh, I'll confirm that it's a 10 mil. We'll see, maybe it's smaller. Might be an eight or something. So I will let you know in one moment because then we'll just tighten up those first two mounts and then we'll drill the other ones. So yeah, the nut on the back is an eight and then you'll want an Allen key of some sort. This is actually a bike tool, but it's the perfect size. So basically what I'm gonna do is just tighten this one up quickly, go do the same on the other side and then I'll be ready to drill the extra holes. Now let's see, that's already nice and tight. You can feel that will be very secure. And if you're worried, if you plan to put a lot of weight on your table, uh, you could potentially put a bigger washer on the back just so it doesn't ever bend the plastic. But uh, if you're just gonna put like a stove, normal stuff, I have had zero issues with mine over time and I've had one of the like big dual burner jet boils on there. 
I've had one of the big like rectangular Coleman ones along with the propane tanks and it's never bent or popped out of place or anything. So now that those top two ones are done, you should be able to fold the table fully down. And what that will do is it'll show you where your next holes will need to be. So there's this one here and then there's one down at the bottom. Now I'm trying to remember if on mine I even did the one at the bottom. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I just, I think I remember thinking that because the table pulls down, it's those top two mounts that are doing all the work. So what I will do now is just, there we go. Drill the hole in this next one on each side, get those in. And then I'm just gonna take a look at the bottom. I'll probably do them as well. I'm just gonna confirm that the bolt is long enough because that's exactly where the door skin starts to dip down a bit. So now to put it back on, you bring that plastic part over the window latch. And then what you'll want to do is just figure out where one clip lines up and you might feel it just go into place. So I have one here, so I'm just gonna hit it. And then that seems to have started to line up the others, but I'll just make sure. And then basically, you just play whack-a-mole until they're all in. And then what you can do, because there's ones in the middle, just make sure that they all clipped in at the same time. It seems like it's pretty well on there now. What I will say, and what I would maybe not do again, is that bottom bolt. Uh, it just doesn't look very nice, and I believe it's putting some extra stress on the left-hand side here, so I have to like, more properly slam it than I would like to. The right side is a bit easier, um, but now that I've drilled that hole, I don't wanna pull that out. And it is giving support at the bottom here. I think it just maybe slightly tweaks it, so you just have to close it a little harder. Um, but basically, once it's done, you'll be able to just flip down your table like this, and then you'll be able to just put it up. And yeah, it's this side that I just have to put a little bit more force into. So if I close it, I think from the left side, then we're good then it's latched in perfectly. That will probably wear in a little bit over time is my guess, but I think it's just some pressure from the plastic. So maybe just stick to those top three bolts if you're gonna mount it in a similar location and this length of table. Now what you'll do is basically just reverse all of those steps. You have those two bolts that need to go back in. And uh, let's see, I might just do that with the Phillips. If it's not a pain. Um, and so these ones, I would just make sure that you get reasonably snug in there. I might actually use the 10 mil for this uh, just to make it um, thread in back in as well as possible. They're just threading into plastic. And the problem with plastic is anything's a thread, but I would like them just to sit uh, kind of how they did before they came out. Uh, then you'll put the caps back on. You'll put the little um, caps up here. Let's see which one's which. Um, around the uh, around the struts here, and then basically the installation is done. So what you get once that's fully supported is just a nice place to put all your stuff, and uh, it's slightly angled, but um, it is what it is. Most things won't like fall off. Like, I don't know if I have something here. There's a plant pot. You could pretend this was a cup, like it'll just sit there. So for the most part, you're not gonna have any issues with stuff rolling off. Uh, if it is delicate stuff or you're cooking and you don't want stuff sliding in a pan to one side, maybe just use some traction boards or rocks or whatever, or a little hill to uh, level this out. But yeah, this is essentially the bison gear table and uh, looks good. They don't really make noise, which is nice because you just don't want something rattling around. This clip system works very well. Um, and yeah, it's easy to clean. If you get stuff on it, that stainless steel top, you just get those same wipes that you'd use for your fridge or something. And uh, you can also disinfect them. One last note, one final note. I know I mentioned earlier that there's that top bolt hole um, where I would maybe not use this bottom one and that is actually what I'm gonna stick with. You can see this bolt sticking out, it's just not that pretty, and I think it puts a little extra stress on it that it doesn't need. So I would use those top three bolt holes and just leave that bottom one open and hanging. There'll be enough support that the table won't flap around 
Um, so that's personally what I would do, or you could get a longer bolt or some other solution for the bottom here if you wanted to use all four. If you're gonna have a lot of weight, that might be an idea. But uh, yeah, anyways, I'm excited to see you guys next time with some more modifications on the mild to wild build.